Hi, I'm Caroline Mitchell, canine behaviorist at Good Doggy. So the other day I was asked by one of my clients about a situation that happened in the past. They'd been at a class and a different trainer had told them that no matter how bad their dogs recall, if they do eventually come back to them, they should always still reward it. And they were struggling to understand and just really wanted to know why exactly would they have been told that. And I totally understand why that might feel wrong, which is why I decided to make this video, because I think that this is something that a lot of people struggle with. They feel like they've worked really hard to get their dog to come back, they've mucked around for ages, and they still have to give them a reward, and often that just doesn't feel right. So in this video, I'm gonna explain why he said that and why that you should always reward a good um, or bad recall. And I'm gonna talk a bit about why punishing a bad recall doesn't work. And also I'm gonna help you out with a better way to improve your recall for next time. So don't just rely on giving treats for rubbish recalls as a good way of moving forward with your training. We'll talk a bit about that too and how you can find better ways to improve that. To start with though, um, I wanna explain just a little bit about how dogs think and how they learn, because this will help you understand why it makes sense to reward that rubbish recall. So dogs learn by connecting actions to results. So the dog does something, let's say in this case, it's a sit, the dog then gets given a treat, they like the treat and they connect the sit and the treat together. And because they like the treat, it means that they are more likely to do it again. They're gonna see if they can get the same result. So the more immediate the result is to the action, the more likely the dog will connect those two things together. So in this case with your sit, if they sit and you give them the treat immediately within a second, a split second, they will know that the sit led to the treat and they will connect them together and know that if they sit again, then they will get another treat. However, if you rummage around in your pocket a bit because you've lost the treat, it's down at the bottom, or you can't get to pack it open, or you fumble a bit with your hands, or you weren't just paying attention or whatever, and the dog sees a delay between the sit and then gets the treat a moment later, then they will be much less sure that it was actually even the sit that um, won them the treat at all. And the more time that passes between the action, the sit, and the reward, the treat, the less likely they will connect them together at all. So if there's a big gap between the action and the reward, then they may never connect those two things together. And this is why getting the timing right with rewards is so important. This happens the same for your recall. So if you're out in the park and you've called your dog six times, he's running around like a lunatic, sniffing everything, playing with his friends, grabbing treats off of strangers. But eventually on the seventh call, he does finally come back to you. I understand that this is very frustrating, but actually in this case, the very last action that dog did was coming back to you. And that is what you wanted. So if you want him to connect coming back to you with getting a reward, even though he faffed around for five minutes before the seventh call when he finally came, he's forgotten all about that. All he's thinking about is the last thing he did and the result. So the last thing he did was come back to you, then he got his treat. So he will connect those two things together. And this will mean that next time he will do a better job. When we are training, and not just recall training, but any kind of training, trick training, behavior training, if you are trying to help your dog cope better with anxiety, or if he's overexcited, whatever kind of work you're doing with your dog, a rehearsal or a practice for next time. So what you'll do is you're creating a situation or finding one or coming across a situation, you're going to practice what you've learned in that situation in real life, so that your dog will be better next time. And the reason for this is because most dogs are not motivated by food. They are rewarded by it, but not motivated. So the difference between the two is that a motivator will change a dog's behavior. The treat will reward a behavior. So if you're using a motivator, then you're relying on the treat to achieve what you want. So if your dog's running around in the park, but you know that um, no matter what he's doing, he will change his behavior because you have chicken, then the chicken is doing all the work. But this isn't an ideal way of training a dog because what if you don't have your motivator? A reward is much more effective, but a reward won't change his behavior in that moment, but it will change it for next time. So when he comes back to you, even on that seventh go, and you've given him his reward, he'll feel good about what he just did, 
and then next time he'll try better. He'll connect coming back to you with getting that reward and that good feeling that he really likes. He'll like that feeling. Um, so it's gonna improve his response for next time. So stop thinking about your training as changing things now when your dog um, has become reactive to something that's happening. Don't do the training to fix that now. Do the training so he doesn't do it next time. That's really what you're aiming for. So you're looking for all of the good stuff that he's doing, rewarding that so that next time he makes better choices. That's how all of your training should really work. Don't rely on cheats or even telling your dog off or anything like that that you might do in that moment to change the outcome. Use the situation to practice so that the outcome will be better next time. So I hope that I've explained that well enough because that is really where um, everything changes. When you train for next time, then you have much better success. So anyway, in that situation, the dog's been running around like a lunatic, sniffing everybody, and then he's finally come back on the seventh go. So there were two options, weren't there? We could either just reward them for their rubbish recall or the other option was actually just to tell them off or give them some kind of punishment, withhold the treat. Some people might even show them the treat and then put it back in the pocket so they can see that there's been a consequence there, that they could have had a treat, but now they can't. But when we understand that the action immediately prior to the outcome is the one that gets connected to it, we can see that any kind of punishment, any negative response from you at all, even a mildly negative one, is not gonna improve your recall for next time. What will your dog learn from you if he runs to you and gets yelled at or if the treat goes back in the pocket compared to what might he learn from you if he runs to you and then you give him that treat and you give him a cuddle and you give him a pet. So what he learns in option one is there's no point in coming back because I'm gonna have a negative experience. Returning to my owner gives me a bad feeling or you can give him the treat, give him the praise and he'll learn that coming back to my owner gives me a good feeling. So when we're looking at training for next time, then the second option is the best, which is why we reward a bad recall, no matter how bad it was. But I did say I would give you some tips on a better way to improve your recall, because that on its own is not going to fix your recall long term. Something has gone wrong. So the first thing is, is we need to figure out exactly what it was that's gone wrong. Was it that your dog just hasn't really fully learned a recall yet? This is quite common. Often we expect the learning process to take a much shorter amount of time than it really does. In my previous video, I talked a lot about making habits and how that takes much longer. So if this is the case for you, check out that video, but stop letting him off the lead. He's obviously not ready for that yet and start spending more time going back over to basics and practice, practice, practice. Also check out my video on the 80-20 rule as the tips why you shouldn't let your dog off the lead until they're absolutely ready because that video explains why having too many failed recalls can actually make your training go backwards. So the lead will help keep you consistent and keep your, your success rate high, which means you'll actually make progress. This is another very common problem that people have with their recall in the very early stages. So check out both of those videos, thinking about your recall while you're watching them. Maybe he was distracted by something and that's why he wasn't coming back to you. So perhaps some extra socialization would fix that. So if he's just running off playing with other dogs, does he need to spend more time with other dogs in a kind of relaxing play situation? So think about whether that might help. Perhaps you need to focus your recall practice in different locations and specific situations and distractions. So often we teach our dog to do a recall in one place. Maybe you teach it in your local park. Perhaps you have a private dog field that you hire, which incidentally are brilliant places to give your dog freedom during their training process when they are now kept on their lead. So if you are not able to let your dog off the lead in a public place, then this is a stopgap for you. You can use these private dog hire fields. They're everywhere now for that. But if you need to practice your recall in specific situations, so we teach it in one place and then we go to somewhere completely different. So we teach it at the park or we teach it in the dog class or we teach it in our garden. And then we go to the beach, which feels really different. And our dog is not connecting all the training that they've had in the past into this new environment. Or maybe we've always taught them in a place where there's lots of kids running around, but actually there was never a dog there or perhaps it was the other way around. So perhaps they just need to practice and practice and practice in these different locations and specific distractions. So think about maybe if that's what's caused your recall to go wrong on that occasion. Um, another thing that can happen to your recall is your dog is too far away. 
So the further away from you your dog goes, the more important the environment becomes to them and the less interested they are in you. They're closer to the stuff that they're following. Maybe they're tracking a scent or with a friend or whatever, but they're very far away from you. So when you're calling them, they're not paying attention. They don't feel that they're connected to you in that way. A lot of the long lines you get that you probably will get for your training are about 10 meters. And once you've used a long line, you can start to get used to what 10 meters feels like. Whenever your dog starts to go beyond 10 meters, when they're off the lead, then you need to start calling them back because we don't want your dog to be running further, further away from you like that. And this is a good reason. I mean, if they've seen their friend in the distance or they're chasing a ball, there's a reason for them to go outside of that 10 meter zone. But if they're just sort of sniffing about, wandering about, then going out of that zone is not ideal. The further out of that they go, the less likely they are to come to you. So consider that. And then finally, did something scare them? If that's the case, then desensitization work needs to happen alongside your recall training. So if he was frightened by a noise or a car went past or a bike or something like that and he ran away, or maybe he ran towards something that scared him. Perhaps he's quite reactive to other dogs and he saw one in the distance and wanted to go towards it to scare it away then um, desensitization training, lots of positive reinforcement, working on that separately will help to solve that problem. Or maybe you just don't know. Maybe you have no idea why your recall keeps failing. And if that's the case, then my best advice is to go back to the start and work through all the steps one by one, because you'll cover all of those bases as you go. And if you don't know how to do it, then I have a step-by-step -step guide to recall it's a month long program. You'll get emails throughout the month telling you what to do and you'll get tasks to do every single day. And that'll guide you through all of these steps. We'll talk about distractions and distance and undoing training fails and the 80-20 rule. And all of that is all included in there. The only thing I don't talk you do about is desensitizing a dog that has reactive or anxiety issues because that is a completely separate topic. And um, I could go on and on and on for ages about that. So if that's a problem for you, work on that separately and then go through the recall steps alongside that. And it should all come together at the same time. So I'll pop a link to that in the description. Other than that, hopefully that's answered the question about why you should always reward a rubbish recall, no matter how rubbish. As long as they came back in the end, always give them that treat. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care for now. Bye-bye.